Okay, you can see our vacuum's pretty good, 670 microns. Also got a second micron gauge there, showing somewhat higher. Okay, we're ready to charge this machine. You'll notice the gauges on the right have just a small amount of positive pressure. This is a 134A machine. There's a 134A cylinder. And we are going to begin charging this thing. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to charge this thing with gas through the low side. It's a small amount of refrigerant, so there's not an issue of... Uh, you know, trying to get a lot of refrigerant in there. Uh, it's TXV controlled, so charging this thing is going to be really pretty straightforward. The only thing this thing doesn't have is it doesn't have a uh, receiver, which is a little unusual. TXV controlled boxes oftentimes have a receiver, but because it's a medium temp box, sometimes they can get away without it. So anyway, we're going to start this thing up and begin charging. The machine is started. We're showing a vacuum in the low side. I'm going to go ahead and open this up. We'll be watching the scale. Okay, in the model plate it says it takes 11 ounces. Now I'm going to start out with that. I haven't put an oversized dryer on it or anything like that. So the 11 ounces should be good. We're at 7 right now, going up. And we're just going to concentrate right now on the uh, gauge set. Okay, 134A, suction pressure 16.2, 166 head. Now we're at a 90 degree ambient. So, because, and these things oftentimes work with a 90 degree plus ambient number. Even some of the newer ones work that way. One thing I do want you to understand is the machine has to be settled down before you can complete charge. That means the box temperature has to be within three or four, maybe five degrees of its uh, shutoff temperature. And, you know, it just has to be stable. Okay. So, subcool 2.4. Superheat 23. Okay, it's TXV controlled, so uh, obviously I'm low on charge. So I'm going to add in a little bit of charge. Okay, I want you to note I put an ounce and a quarter into the machine. The subcool went up quite a bit with an ounce and a quarter put in. Okay, we had an increase in subcool by a little bit. And actually had an increase in superheat. I think what's happening is the condenser is filling up and getting to where it has to be to provide all liquid refrigerant going into the expansion device. Even though we have 4.4 degrees of subcool, there's probably still bubbles going through the liquid line. So I'm going to put another ounce of refrigerant and we'll see what happens. I've got put another actually ounce and a quarter in there and you can see uh, my superheat is going down my subcool went up a little bit it looks like I pretty much filled the uh, condenser and I'm probably good at getting all liquid into the expansion device uh, the TXV and so it's starting to drop down some Okay, we've got another ounce or so of refrigerant in there. You notice the subcool's gone up some. And our superheat is kind of drifting down. Now what I like is about 12 degrees of superheat. But that's not how I'm charging. If I charged by that, I could massively overcharge the uh, machine. Because when I hit my stable superheat, then it's not going to change any no matter what I do. And I am pretty close to it. Uh, our high ambient has given us a pretty high condensing temperature. But that's fairly normal for this machine. I'll put you on the saturated here in a minute. We'll take a look at that. Okay, I've got it on saturated now. Uh, 
I notice we're still about seven or eight degrees above the box temperature I'd like, so we're running a little high on that head. Uh, but it is slowly coming down as the box temperature comes down. And you notice we're running about a little under 130, and it's about 90 degrees out here. It will do a high head until that box gets right down to temperature. Remember, the 30 plus ambient is what we're actually looking for, but that's only in a machine that's stable. So we're going to let this thing run for a little while longer, bring it down a little bit, and then we're going to double check our superheat and subcool and see how we come out. Remember, the head pressure and, of course, the head temperature are completely dependent on how many BTUs are being moved into that coil. If there's a lot of BTUs going into the coil because it's got a warm box and a bunch of warm product in it, that head pressure is going to correspondingly rise. So let's say you either have a warm box or you have a box that has warm product in it. Don't expect the 30 plus ambient to always follow because a lot of times it'll, it just won't. Simply, there's too many BTUs moving through it, so it's going to go up. Okay, now uh, let's look again at this with super heat and sub cool. We're 13.6 or 5 on uh, super heat and 5.3 on sub cool. Okay, I'm going to add another ounce of refrigerant in that thing and let's see what happens to that super heat. Uh, with another ounce in there, uh, the thing went off, but I think we've got four ounces we've added into it. Uh, we're running about 12. Subcool 6.7, 6.8, something like that. We're going to let that settle for a few minutes and then we're going to add a little bit more chart. Okay, we uh, added another ounce to this thing. And I noticed the superheat is staying about the same. The subcool went up about one degree or maybe a little less than one degree. I'm going to add another ounce in there. And let's see if the superheat changes at all. Okay, here I want you to note that superheat has stayed almost identical for the last couple of ounces. Remember, this is a little tiny unit, it only takes about 11 ounces. Uh, but the, sub, the subcool has gone way up. So, what we have, we've reached a full charge position right now. I can actually take probably about a half an ounce or an ounce out of this thing and it should be about right on the money. But you see, we're still sitting there at about 12 on our superheat, but our subcool's going up. Okay, here you can see, uh, I pulled that ounce out, superheat staying about the same, subcool went down to 7.5. That's probably pretty close. So I'm gonna call this thing good. I think we got our uh, unit charged, it's within two or three degrees of its set point and with that 7.2, 7.1, I think it could probably run either way if I went up much it's going to go up quite a bit like I said that one ounce made, ran it up to 11 so uh, I'm going to leave that one as it is, it looks pretty good and that's how you charge these little units I'm going to be coming out with another one on where you check super eat, uh, super eat on these things because super eat is kind of hard to test on these little machines and uh, I'll show you the two different places that I put the probes.